What's going on guys and welcome to another my experience video and today it's about this little guy this right here is my oyster crested goby now these fish are really awesome and i've had them for a few months now so i've had enough time to have some experience with them so that i can share this information with you guys so i usually go to live aquaria for my details and specifications about my fish however this guy was not on their site at the time so I got my information from that that pet place, which is actually local to me in Pennsylvania, and actually about two hours from my current residence. So he is available as a captive bred fish. He is from Australia. There are bottom dwelling fish. He is a goby. They are territorial. They are reef safe, invert safe, community safe. They are four inches long, they get up to four inches long, and they will do well in a 30 gallon or more. So I've had this guy for a while. He was originally in my seahorse tank when he was a tiny little guy. And normally when I've seen these guys, I normally see them in a very light gray color. Mine, as you can see, he's a lot darker. Um, he has a lot of blues and reds. It's hard for you to tell from here. Uh, the lighting's just not that great but he actually has a lot of blues and reds. Um, very personable fish, as you can see, he's staring me down. He's ready for his food. Uh, I just fed the fish tank some pellets, so everyone's out and about, and so is he. Now, I also keep in here a orange spotted goby, and that is a sand sifting goby, and they actually coexist rather well. If you know anything about gobies, gobies are very territorial, um, and they will defend any fish that comes near their burrow. This guy lives in this opening right under this rock, and my sleeper goby, he hides under this rock right here with all my euphilia. He's actually uh, buried himself in his hole at the moment. But this guy is amazing. Although he is about half the size of my orange spotted goby, he holds his own very well, and you can even see his burrow is literally within a couple of inches from my orange spotted goby. Now they will tolerate each other 90% uh, of the time. Uh, with the other 10%, they will just chase each other around. Um, generally, it's the bigger, bigger goby doing most of the chasing. But other than that, uh, you will have zero issues with this guy. If you're wondering why I pulled him out of my seahorse tank, that is because I have dwarf seahorses and I literally caught him one day trying to eat one of them because they were about the size that can fit in his mouth. So he's currently of a size of about inch and a half and the seahorses are probably about a quarter inch. So you imagine how tiny they are compared to him. So he's been thriving in here. I just went ahead and threw him in here after that incident and he's been in here ever since. He mainly eats pellets. Most of my fish get fed pellets throughout the day. And every couple of days I feed some frozen food. So you will have no issues feeding him pellets. He's not the most graceful or most aggressive feeder. As you can see him here, he generally takes up mouthfuls of sand more than the pellets themselves. But he does get around to eating the pellets. He also eats mysis, um, all types of frozen. I've fed anything from mysis, to uh, brine, to live foods. He will eat whatever he can fit in his mouth. So he will have no issues with this guy. So if you're interested, head over and get one of these guys. They're an amazing fish. I believe I got him for around 20 bucks and I really, really just like him. Like I said, normally I find them in a grayish color, but this guy, see the reds? He's very dark, very red, very, very beautiful fish. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave me some questions in the comment section below. Uh, leave your comments. Let me know if you've kept one of these before. And thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.